Toussaint believed Saint-Domingue's survival and the survival of freedom itself depended on his ability to mobilize people to rebuild the devastated economy. And in Toussaint's mind, that meant one thing. His black followers should return to the cane fields. But nobody wanted to go back to that kind of work. So he pretty well had to force them. And then the people began to think, hmm, this is a lot like slavery. Toussaint's luster began to tarnish. In 1802, Toussaint was stunned to see the largest French expeditionary force ever assembled entering Saint-Domingue's harbor. Toussaint Louverture fought the invading French army for three grueling months, but the island's black population, now disenchanted with his leadership, offered lackluster support. On May 6, 1802, Toussaint Louverture surrendered. At first, he was allowed to retire from the army with full honors. But a month later, he was called to a meeting with the French commander. If I wanted to count all the services that I have rendered to the French government, I will need several volumes, and still, I wouldn't finish it all. Toussaint was arrested on charges of conspiracy. Toussaint peacefully boarded a ship for France. Saint-Domingue remained mostly calm in Toussaint's wake. Jean-Jacques Dessalines and the other black officers continued cooperating with French general Victor Leclerc. But then, news arrived from the nearby colony of Guadeloupe. Napoleon had reinstated slavery. Saint-Domingue erupted in anger and fear Dessalines quickly broke from France. One more time, the former slaves of Saint-Domingue took to the field against European armies. Dessalines is a no holds bar, no compromising leader and figure who is going to eradicate anything that stands in the way of what the people have been mobilizing towards. One fleeing white, Pierre Chazot, paused on a mountaintop to observe the devastation. No less than 10 square leagues of country burning like volcanoes. The rapidity of the conflagration was such as to make the beholder believe that large and thick trains of gunpowder had previously been laid down. Dessalines' scorched-earth tactics worked. In 1803, the French army was finally driven out. 50,000 French soldiers had died. And Saint-Domingue, Haiti, became the world's first black republic. <laughs> 